So now the question becomes, which of these chairs, we'll call this chair 1 up here, and this chair 2, is higher in energy? And so higher energy typically means more 1, 3 diaxial interactions. And as we learned from reading the text, uh, a 1,3 diaxial interaction is sort of a destabilizing interaction. And if I can draw the hydrogen that lives at that axial position, we have a 1,3 diaxial interaction between the methyl and the hydrogen and between the isopropyl and that hydrogen, which I can sort of try to draw right there. And so we have two 1,3 diaxial interactions, not to mention the 1,3 diaxial interaction between the methyl and the isopropyl group. Uh, and so we have chair 1 has two axial groups. And that's going to lead to a lot of destabilizing interaction. Chair 2 has zero axial groups, except for hydrogens. And we don't typically count those, because there's always going to be a few axial hydrogens. So that would... That would tell us that chair 1 is higher in energy. If the question asks you to circle the lower energy chair, you would then circle this one. So what if we were what if we were given a different chair? So let's look at a chair that has two groups on it, but they're not always going to be uh, the same. So let's look at this chair. I'm just going to move the isopropyl group uh, a couple of carbons around the ring. And so we need to draw some chairs now with uh, a methyl and an isopropyl. So if this is carbon 1, 2, 1, 2, I'm going to leave the hydrogens off the chair flip. Looks like that. Uh, carbon number 2 comes up to become right there. So the up bond is the uh, axial. Carbon number one is now right there. And it has an up bond, but it's going to be equatorial. So now which of these is higher in energy? They both have, have one axial position. So now we're going to look for the larger axial position. So here are the two axial substituents. Um, isopropyl is larger and thus it has a bigger effect on the 1,3 diaxial destabilizing effect. So the lower energy uh, chair structure is going to be this one that has the smaller substituent axial. So lower energy equals smaller substituent in the axial position. And occasionally we'll give you some numbers uh, so that you can uh, calculate the actual energy or the actual destabilizing effect. But if we don't have any numbers, as we do in this example, no numbers, you're simply going to look for the larger group or the, the more groups. If we have three groups that are axial in one chair and one group in the other chair, most likely uh, it will be the three groups that are uh, the, the highest energy chair structure. Except if we have tertiary but butyl group. If that is in an axial position, that's going to be the largest destabilizing effect that we can think of in, in our semester. So if I have a T-butyl group, and it's in the equatorial versus now the chair flip it comes in the axial, that basically locks this chair in the equatorial position. The T-butyl group is so large and such a, has such a destabilizing effect when it's in the axial position that there's not a lot of this particular chair conformation present at equilibrium. In fact, there's very, very little, less than 0.01%. Uh, and so the T-butyl group essentially locks and favors only this chair. Even if there's ethyl groups here, Right here we have two axial ethyl groups versus, uh, in this case, we would say uh, 
there are the ethyl groups, and they're in the equatorial position uh, for that. Uh, the T-butyl group will still, still lock it in this particular chair conformer. So we, we can keep the T-butyl in the equatorial position. So uh, that is sort of the exception. If we have a T-butyl group, it will invariably prevent the chair flip, and the T-butyl group will always exhibit exist in the equatorial position.